Hello everyone, my name is Jimmy Mills, and today I'm going to present to you how to install and configure an SSH.com product called Privix. So let's get started. Privix can be installed on a single host, but please review architecture recommendations to ensure your environment is built for scale. For this demo, I'm installing on a T2 Micro instance in AWS. This is below the recommended sizing, but this showcases just how lightweight the software really is. The full installation can be performed in a matter of minutes. I have a PuTTY session opened up to my instance and I've elevated myself to root. To install, I first need to add the EPL repository. Then I'll add the Privix repository, and now I can simply do a yum install of all the latest Privix packages. It normally takes a few minutes to install all of these packages, but uh, we should be done here in just a matter of seconds. To configure the components for Privix, we will run the post install script. The first prompt will be for configuring the key vault settings, but this is a bare bones installation and we will not be using an HSM. We'll then get a prompt for the Privix server's FQDN. Being an AWS instance, I have private and public host name, so I'll put both of those in for this build. And I'll do the same thing for the IP addresses. The database Privix uses is Postgres, and you'll have the option to use a local or external database. With this build, I select local, and I certainly wouldn't recommend this, but I'm going to keep the database name and password as simple as possible, and I'll use Privix for both. Lastly, it'll ask me for a super user account and password which will be the first login account that will be used to log in and finish configuring Privix. So now that all of this is done, I can now connect to the admin UI where I'll use the super user account to get logged in. Once logged in, you'll get a notification that the product requires a license. Just click on settings and licenses to import a license code. I pasted in my code, but since it is a valid license, I can't share it on this video. With a valid license, I can move forward with binding to an Active Directory instance. I could have done this by using local accounts, but the strength of Privix is to tie into your current identity and access management environment. So once we get connected to AD, we will then be able to create a role which is linked to an AD group, and then we can map that AD group to a privileged account on a machine. Privix supports a wide range of directory services for both user and host store information. I have a very basic AD server up and running in AWS that I'll bind to. Now that we have that connected, you'll see we have 11 users within AD. Let's jump to creating a role. A role can be named whatever you'd like it to be. Since I'm working in AWS, I'll call this role EC2 user. I can then map this to a group within AD that I've pre-created called Unix admins. Now that the role has been created, I can map that role to an account on a host. This can be done in different ways, and here's a screenshot of how it can be done manually. But Privix has a pre-built deployment script which can be used to perform all of these steps. I'll click on the Configure Using Deployment Script option, and I can add the script here. Step 2 gives me some basic examples of some parameters that can be passed when executing it. So I already did some magic in the background to SFTP the script to my test host. I'll chmod it to make it executable, and I'll pass the parameters of AWS and specify the principle where I'm basically mapping the CentOS user account to the EC2 user role within Privix. Once that has been ran successfully, I can come back to the web interface. I'll log out of the super user account, and I'll log in with my own credentials since my account belongs to the Unix admins group. Once logged in, you'll notice as the non-admin to Privix, I will not see the settings or the monitoring tabs. This screen is what all the end users will see. The user can click on connections where they will then be able to see all the hosts and accounts they have access to. The user can now just click on the host and they will get authenticated. There is no password or SSH key used for this authentication. It is using a just-in-time certificate that only exists for as long as a session is needed. Now once disconnected, the cert is destroyed, meaning no credential needs to be shared or rotated. The audit record of the connection will still be logged and recorded by Privix, and the endpoint will also log to the syslog, showing a successful authentication using a certificate. 
If you'd like to learn more about Privix, you can go to the ssh.com website and you can also go to the help.ssh.com where you'll find manuals and tutorials about the product. I hope you enjoyed this video and just how easy it is to install and deploy Privix. Thanks for your time.